We're going to learn about what JavaScript is right off the bat. And it's definitely a programming language that is most beneficial for web developers. And let's go ahead and start off. This first screen is showing it's a video why programming is important. I will put that link um, before this lecture. But that's a really good video to watch, just talking about the importance of why it's good to learn any programming language. But what makes JavaScript a little different from other programming languages? Um, if you remember the three basic parts that are very fundamental for web development are HTML, CSS, and now we're going to get that third part is JavaScript. Um, it is the programming language of HTML and the web. Now, HTML was the markup language that affects content, like what's your headline, how many divisions are there in the page, how many sections and articles, how many paragraphs do you have, what's the content of the paragraphs, and things like that, the structure. Now, CSS was the style sheet language, which affects presentation. What font are you going to use for the headline? What's the background color of the page? How wide are the sections and divs um, and the paragraphs and how it presents, how it looks to the user. Now JavaScript is that third section and it is a, definitely a full-blown programming language and it's going to affect the behavior and interactivity of your page with the user. What happens when they mouse over a menu or click something what happens when they enter the wrong value of a form that doesn't work? How long does a photo slideshow take to move from one image to the next? Lots of different things that can happen with this interactivity so you don't just have this basic static page. It's very interactive. Um, and most pages you see will have some sort of a JavaScript in them. Now JavaScript is a scripting language, which means it's a programming language that supports scripts program written for a special runtime environment. Now, what that means, if you look at the picture here, it's, it's not a standalone language. If you look at languages like C++ and uh, Java, App, and .NET, some of these can run alone without anything else and they may be called a compiled program. You build the code, you compile it, and it becomes a .exe or executable program that can be all alone. JavaScript is not that way. JavaScript was designed for integrating and communicating with other programming languages. So when you hear scripting language, that's usually what it means. It works with another programming language. So JavaScript is a scripting language that works alongside of HTML. So instead of compiling the code all at once, um, it's going to be interpreted one command at a time. So when it gets to the browser of the user, the browser is actually going to help interpret that code in runtime as the page is rendered and as it gets to the JavaScript coding, it will um, run that one command at a time. Um, so it does run inside of a web browser. It does have limitations, but it does exactly what it's supposed to do. There's not some real in-depth things like accessing files or input and output sometimes, um, but it's designed to manipulate web pages. Some of the bigger background things that we might have to have happen, we may use with this backend system like PHP. Okay, a little history on JavaScript and why it has its name. Don't confuse JavaScript and Java. They are completely different languages, um, both in concept and design. It just so happened when JavaScript came out that Java was very popular, and it was kind of a ploy to ride on the wave of popularity of Java to name this JavaScript. But don't confuse the two. Java does not rely on browsers to run. Um, you can use it for app development and things like that, but JavaScript is completely different. It was invented by Brendan Eich at Netscape in 1995 and it first appeared in Navigator 2.0 browser. And it became an ECMA standard, ECMA standard in 1997. So the 
official name is ECMAD 262, um, and ECMAScript 7th edition was released in 2016. Um, ECMA 262 is the JavaScript international standard now. So that's more, of, I guess, a proper proper name for it. Um, it and ECMA doesn't really stand for anything anymore. It used to be European Computer Manufacturers Association, but it doesn't really reflect the global reach it has now, so they don't really use that acronym anymore. Um, it's just no, considered an acronym, and that's it. Okay. So how does JavaScript kind of work? Its purpose is to make web pages more interactive. With JavaScript, you can make web applications and web apps, not just sites. Um, if you look at all the different things it can do, it can access content, you can select elements on the page, you can take users' inputs and the values they give you and, and do JavaScript on those, um, and it can get access to those for you. You can modify content. You can add attributes to different elements and change the CSS so that different things happen there. You can add text, um, change text on pages, um, all sorts of different things. Um, program rules, you can take um, calculations and do them at runtime. Um, you can define different steps for the computer to follow. Um, you can also, like a group of pictures, if they click on a certain picture, you can make that picture bigger. You could always make sure a certain animation starts at the bottom of the screen, whether they're on a phone, tablet, or a laptop, whatever it may be. There's different things you can do with program rules to follow that. They can react to events, whether that's a button pressed, an image getting clicked, hovering, um, information on the form as they load, as they're entering the information in the form. When the page loads, all these different things can um, you can wait to run the code until a particular event happens. So very versatile, the things that JavaScript can do. And I think my last slide, let me see, let me go back here. Okay, and it just to know, it is a front-end language, and that means that even though it's kind of running, the code's kind of running in the background, you don't really see it other than what is happening, it is still considered a front-end meaning that the code runs on the user's computer by their browser. It's interpreted by their browser. And as opposed to a back-end language like PHP, where the code is run on a server before it's even sent to the user or before the browser even sees it. So that's why it's considered a front-end um, language for front-end developers and designers. And code like PHP would be then a back-end programming language. So hopefully that helps you understand a little bit about what JavaScript is.